Hello everyone and welcome to Willow Cove Crafts, my channel here on YouTube where I talk about knitting and sewing and my other crafty endeavors. My name is Emily and today's video is all about everything I knit, sewed, and crocheted in the month of December 2022. As this is my first video of 2023, I wanted to take a few moments to talk about some plans and changes that are coming to the channel this year. If you're more interested in hearing just about my projects, I will have timestamps in the description below so you can skip on right ahead. But for the rest of you, I want to let you know what you can expect of me this year. Over the last several months, I've been doing a lot of reflecting about what I want this channel to be and what I want it to look like, and I've been thinking about it a lot, and I am coming to the realization that I don't think the standard knitting podcast formula is for me anymore. I still love making YouTube videos. I want to keep putting content out there for you, but I just want to change it up a little bit. I do find myself getting a little bored making those types of videos where, you know, I just go through my projects that I've worked on in the last week or two, uh, finished objects that, you know, kind of traditional knitting video format. And so what I have decided to do in the new year is to continue making those types of videos but to only do so monthly. So that's what this is. If you've watched a lot of my videos before, I'm planning to do kind of a, a monthly recap video where I talk about what I worked on and what I finished the previous month. So you can still expect that type of video once a month. And I do kind of anticipate those videos to be a bit more brief. You know, here's the project, here's the pattern, the materials that were used, the progress I have made since last time. Um, but I do want to save kind of the really in-depth details about that project for a different video. So again, those videos are going to come out once a month. And then I do plan on making project-specific finished object videos for the weeks in between. On top of that, I have really been bitten by the sewing bug. I want to sew all of my clothes. I have really been inspired by a lot of the sewing channels I have seen here on YouTube, and I really want to take a stab at doing some more sewing content, vlogs, sew along with me, um, I don't quite know what that will look like yet, but I do want to kind of chronicle the process of making my sewn garments. It's a lot easier to do that than with knitting because it's a lot quicker. Um, you know, I could film a sewing vlog in a day while I make a shirt and share it with you all. And so I also want to start introducing a lot more sewing content into the channel. And then, you know, maybe throwing in a few extras here and there. The last couple of weeks, I've been doing my shawl whip series. And I want to do more videos like that centered around a specific topic instead of, you know, always doing videos about what I'm working on. So all in all, my goal is to release a video every Sunday. I would love to become a weekly video channel. And I think doing different types of videos and having different types of content is how I'm going to be able to achieve that goal. Because let's face it, I cannot make enough stuff to release a video about my making as I've been doing it every week. That sentence didn't make any sense, but, you know, trying to think about a sustainable way that I can release a video every week, and I think this is it, hopefully. Obviously, there's going to be some trial and error, but I'm really excited for the upcoming videos I have planned, and I hope 
that you all are also excited to just see some different types of things from me. So as I mentioned, today's video is that monthly roundup. So I will be talking about everything I finished and worked on in the month of December. So let's get started. This month I have one finished object and it is what I am wearing. So if you watched last month's monthly roundup video, you may remember me saying that one of my big goals at the moment is to learn how to sew with stretch fabrics. Up to this point in my garment sewing, I have only sewn with woven fabrics and not always, but I feel like woven fabrics tend to make like fancier outfits. That's not the right word, but I've made like a lot of dresses, a lot of more tailored shirts, and I really wanted to learn how to sew with stretch fabrics because I feel like, you know, t-shirting fabric and sweatshirting fabric is the stuff that I wear more on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, even if I'm wearing a hand-knit sweater on a given day, I'm almost always wearing a t-shirt underneath. I think I wear a t-shirt, literally. 95% of the time. And so learning how to sew with that type of fabric was a big goal for me because I feel like if I can learn how to sew with that, I will just make tons of more versatile items that I can wear on a day-to-day -day basis. So anyways, my first attempt at sewing with stretch fabric was the shirt. This is the Lark T pattern by Grainline Studio. And I sewed it out of a cotton jersey that I purchased from Blackbird Fabrics. And it's a really nice light gray color. I made the size 18, which is the largest size in the standard sizes for that pattern. I do believe that they offer an extended size range. So the size 18 is meant for a 44 inch bust, which is kind of small, I must say, but I do believe that there is an option to purchase extended sizes. So anyways, it's not perfect. This was my first time sewing with a knit fabric. There was a huge learning curve. I did a lot of research on like proper techniques or strategies to sew with a fabric like this, but overall I feel like it went really smoothly. Again, I feel like I front loaded a lot of time just like watching YouTube videos and doing research and buying new supplies and you know, really trying to set myself up for success to make this shirt and I think it went pretty well. Again, there's like little like wobbly bits and you know, I, I feel like no one would ever notice this, but like there's like, it's kind of wrinkled at this spot. You know, I have a couple of skipped stitches here and there, but overall I'm like so happy with it. I feel like this is maybe the most satisfying thing I've ever made, even though it's just a basic t-shirt, but like the amount of effort I put into it and just like kind of learning was a ton. I feel like I learned so much making this shirt and having it be done and look mostly professional. Like I feel like no one would really be able to tell that I made this. Not that everything we make has to look store-bought, but I don't know, it just looks great. I'm so happy with it. <laughs> a couple of modifications I made was I 
had a little bit of an issue with the hemming. So I ended up needing to shorten the sleeves because I ripped my fabric on accident. So I tried hemming with a twin needle stitch on my standard sewing machine and that did not go well. My machine just like wasn't handling it. Well, I probably could have spent some more time playing with it and testing things out, but I have had my eye on a cover stitch machine for a while and having this like moment where the twin needle was not working well, I just decided to buy a cover stitch machine. And again, I wouldn't say it was an impulsive purchase. I'd been thinking about it for a while, but then having this like bad experience prompted me to buy the cover stitch machine. If you don't know what a cover stitch machine is, it is, um, so if you look at like the hems of your t-shirts, they've got um, this kind of double line of stitching on the front and then this like webbed stitching on the back and that is done with a specific type of machine called a cover stitch machine. So I now have three sewing machines. I have a regular sewing machine, a serger, and a cover stitch machine and they all serve different purposes. And now that I have all of those machines, I feel like I could make literally anything. So there's gonna be a lot of sewing coming your way. But anyways, um, I, so the twin needle stitch didn't go well and I was not able to rip out that stitching. Like it just was not coming out. So I ended up cutting all of my hems just to like get rid of it. And then the cover stitch machine came. And so I tried hemming with the cover stitch machine and I botched it horribly the first time. It wasn't the machine's fault, it was my fault. I did not measure appropriately. And so then I tried to unpick the stitching from the cover stitch machine and I ended up catching my fabric with my seam ripper and ripping a hole in my fabric. <laughs> so that was more my fault. So all in all, my sleeves, these were full length sleeves. Now they're three quarter length sleeves because I had to hem this three times. And you know, the previous hems were pretty unsalvageable and I just had to like cut off that bit of fabric. But you know, that's fine. I feel like I normally pull my t-shirts up and like scrunch them up around my elbows anyways. So yes, again, it didn't go perfectly. Nothing was like super smooth, but nothing was super bad either. And I feel like I learned a lot. The shirt's not perfect, but the amount of like new techniques I learned was just like monumental and I feel like the next time I sew a t-shirt it's gonna be great. So sometimes you have to struggle through something a bit to learn a lot. That is a belief I hold in life that we learn a lot through our struggles and that includes with our making. The other modification I made I forgot to mention was I added a um, neck band reinforcement. I'll insert a little video here so you can see what I mean. Um, that was not in the pattern and it hasn't been in a lot of the t-shirt patterns I've seen. Um, but I did notice that it was in a lot of my ready to wear t-shirts. Like go look at your t-shirts in your closet. Like they all have that like strip of fabric at the back of the neck and I was like what the heck is that? It's not called out in any of these patterns and I did some research and it's to help stabilize the neck because stretch fabric is obviously stretchy and over time it will kind of stretch out and sag at the neckline and so you put this like reinforcement strip in to kind of keep it in place and obviously our clothes will not last forever they get holes in them or rip or whatever but adding that little piece of fabric does help increase the longevity of your knit garments, not knit garments, knit fabric garments. And it was really easy. I just looked up a tutorial for how to do it and it took maybe 20 minutes. And I think that is a modification that I will make on all of my t-shirts in the future. And 
I think it looks really nice and I got to put in my cute new tags that I bought off of Etsy. I'll try to remember to link the shop I bought those from below but I thought it just made it like that extra little bit professional. Can you tell I'm really excited about this shirt? Anyways, I will stop rambling about it and we will move on to works in progress. I feel like I spent a lot of time talking about my Lark tea. I'm not planning on doing a separate finished object video for it, which is why I went into a lot of detail. But like I mentioned, for works in progress, I'm just going to kind of go over them pretty briefly and then you can expect some more details about modifications and thoughts and things when I actually finish these items. My first work in progress today is the same work in progress I had last month and I'm pretty sure the same work in progress I had the month before. Um, and that is my comb pullover by Fiona Alice and here it is. This is the sweater that will never end. Um, it's fingering weight, it's this all over like textured stitch and lost stitch and it is just taking forever. But the end is in sight since last time I put a little marker where I was last episode. Um, it is knit from the bottom up so last time I had just split for the sleeves and had knit a little bit of the front portion. So right about there. And so I finished knitting the front and then I knit the back from the armhole opening up. And then I knit the collar, which is this beautiful twisted double fold collar. And I have picked up and just about finished the first sleeve. I am on the cuff of the first sleeve. So a lot of knitting time went into this this month. I was really hoping to finish it by Christmas, but that just was not going to happen. So some of you have commented to me on Instagram that maybe I can finish it by Valentine's Day and that it will be a perfect um, red sweater to wear on Valentine's Day. So yes, I have been working pretty monogamously on this sweater for about two months. So it's taking a while, but I am really proud of myself that I've continued working on it. One of my big goals for the new year is to actually, I say this every year, I like to start things and not finish them, especially if they're feeling like extra tedious. And so the fact that I have really persevered and am going to finish this sweater and that I've been working on it monogamously for about two months and am still committed to finishing it, I think I'm like a, a brand new shiny person. I think I'm gonna finish my projects from here on out. Like this was the ultimate test and yeah hopefully it's a finished object next month the yarn i am using is the we county yarns kinross four ply this is in the color mary it blows out quite a bit on camera it looks like a a really warm red here but um if i hold it back it really cools out a bit it's definitely more of a, a cool, like more blue toned red. Um, again, the color is Mary. This is a fingering weight yarn. And I really love this yarn. I am very excited to block my sweater because this yarn does have a lot of spinning oil in it. So it is quite crunchy when you knit with it. But then once you wash your fabric. It is so delightfully soft and yes it just like blooms and gets so soft um, and yes 
very excited to finally have this one done. I think I'll probably finish it in the next couple weeks and so you can expect to see a finished object video about it and then obviously I'll talk about it again at the end of January. My last work in progress today is a crochet project and it was a bit of an impulsive cast on. You don't cast on crochet. It was a bit of an impulsive decision to start it. I um, made my seasonal plans video and this was not included. I'm trying really hard to stick to the plans I set for myself, but this really called to me, so I started it. And yes, that may mean I don't get to everything in my seasonal plans, but you know, things are flexible. But anyways, this project I started because I purchased an advent calendar this year. I'm sure we're all pretty familiar with yarn advent calendars and how fun and exciting they are. So the advent calendar I got this year was from Stress Knits, which is uh, dyed by Stacy Elstone. And Stacy dyes absolutely beautiful yarn. I am always like so impressed with her colors and the subtle differences between her colors. I think she's a really talented dyer. And she has done several advents in the past and she said that this year was gonna be her last one. And so I really wanted to get it as a uh, final farewell to her advent calendars. And um, she didn't actually call it an advent calendar. She called it a winter countdown to be a little more inclusive, which I really appreciate. Um, and it was plant themed, which Wonderful. And she said it was gonna be um, all tonals, which I really like. And so I just knew I would love it. And so I started opening up these mini skeins and I just really wanted to work with them. So I started a new blanket project, which I have so many <laughs> blanket projects on the go. I'm probably gonna do um, like another like miscellaneous whips video in the new year where I'll go through all my blanket projects. But why work on an old blanket project when you can start a new blanket project? So um, I am making the hexagon how to blanket by Attic24. And I'm keeping everything in this little box. And here's what it looks like inside. It's a very exciting box. So here are all of the minis. As I expected, they are stunning. Something I always really appreciate about Stacy's dyeing is just like how subtly different she can get all of these colors. So like for example, all of these are like pretty similar but they are different. These two look very similar on camera, but they are different in real life. Um, one is more blue, one is more green. And then she's got, you know, some more warm colors. I just love this color palette. So um, the hexagon how-to, what it looks like, it's a free pattern. I'll put a link to it below. The original is done in DK weight, so I'm obviously modifying it to be a fingering weight. So I'm using a size C crochet hook and how I'm doing it, so like the original pattern, it's you make circles and every round is a different color. So you make these circles and then on the final round you do um, you turn the circle into a hexagon and then those all get joined together. So how I'm doing it is I am making all of my circles a solid color using the mini skeins and then I'm going to use just a white or a cream on the outsides to 
do the, the hexagon bit. So up to this point, I've just been crocheting little circles and they're very fun and satisfying because they're really quick and they're cute, like little candies. And so over the last couple weeks, I have completely crocheted up four of my mini skeins. So I'll show those to you real quick. So we've got this green and we've got ooh, this other green. This one's more minty, obviously, and this one's a bit darker. And I've done, I'm just gonna drop all these, this. Um, it's a really, really light gray. And this uh, more terracotta color. And I do have my next mini skein. I'm working on this one currently, this nice uh, sunflower yellow. And I'm getting about 13 circles per mini skein. And I calculated it out. I forget my exact numbers, but I have 24 mini skeins at 13 a piece. I think I'll have a few extra. Um, I think I'm doing rows of 14 and 13. None of this makes any sense, but I think I'm gonna have enough circles just out of this mini skeins to make a like throw blanket, a lap blanket for the couch. So yes. Really fun. My plan is to crochet all of those center circles and then I will start joining them together with a white yarn. So I think that'll look really nice. Again, I love this color palette. I think all of these minis are just so cohesive. I love that they're all tonals. As I've mentioned, not a big speckle person. So I was excited to find an advent calendar that did more solid colors. So yes, I again really want to be committed to finishing this. I do think this will be obviously more of a long-term project throughout the year, but I would love to finish this blanket in 2023 and actually finish it. I say that all the time. We'll see. And that is everything I worked on this month. So not a ton of projects, but I feel like I got some really good progress done on each of them. I really wanna focus on having fewer projects, but you know, finishing them a bit more quicker and making more meaningful progress on things. Um, I find that having fewer projects just really helps to clear my mind, if I have too many projects on the go, I'm like, what should I work on? And I work on this, but I feel guilty about not working on that. And it just causes this like mental swirl that I am trying to rid my life of. So fewer, pro fewer projects, but a lot of progress. And that is the energy I would like to carry with me into the new year. So, Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week with my 2022 year in review. I'm gonna go through everything I finished this past year. And yes, if you wanna be notified when that video comes out, remember to subscribe, hit the notification button. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, all of that stuff. And uh, I will see you all again next week. Happy New Year, everyone. Take care.